Sports News is next. This is the ultimate redefined for men. Hello and welcome to Sports News. The Confederation of African Football CAF has slammed a two-match ban on Super Eagles midfielder Ogain Onazi for his straight red card in last weekend's 2017 AFCON qualifier against Chad. Onazi was shown a straight red for retaliation after Nigerian referee Ibrahim Amane awarded Niger a penalty for a foul on striker Odion Igalo. This means the Lazio of Italy midfielder will miss Nigeria's game against Tanzania in Dar es Salaam on September the 6th and against the seven-time African winners Egypt on March 25th next year. The Nigeria Football Federation has reappointed Peter De Debo as coach of the national under-20 women's team, the Falknets. De Debo's assistants, Tony Aila, Matthew Olariwaju and Elwal Bashir, also return as part of the Falknets technical crew. De Debo led the under-17 women national team, Flamingos, to the quarterfinal stage at the World Cup Finals in Trinidad and Tobago in 2010 and Azerbaijan in 2012. His first task will be the 2016 Under-20 Women's World Cup qualifier against Liberia next month. A French Open a champion, Stanislas Wawrinka, has crashed out of the Egon Championships after suffering defeat at the hands of South Africa's Kevin Anderson. Wawrinka lost 7-6, 7-6 to Anderson in the second round of the competition. The 29-year-old South African will meet the winner of Dok Bolov and Guillermo Garcia Lopez in the next round of the tournament, which is a warm-up for Wimbledon, which begins on June the 29th. Well, that's a wrap on Sports News. I'm Ayotun De Balogun. The News at 10 continues shortly. This is the ultimate redefined for men. More than 20 people have been reportedly killed in a series of explosions in Sana'a, the Yemeni capital. Health and security officials say at least two blasts were caused by car bombs. Several mosques and a building allegedly used as the headquarters of Houthi rivals were also hit in the explosions, which left dozens of casualties. The Islamic State terrorist group, in a statement posted online, says it was behind the attack. 34 and say now, according to the government of Niger, a total of 33 migrants have died in the Sahara Desert in Niger while en route to Europe this year. They include 18 of them who were found dehydrated last week near a road to the border with Algeria. Cynthia Ara has more. Well, thank you indeed. That's the case. However, international assessments have put the number closer to 50. Many thousands attempt to cross the vast and inhospitable terrain in order to reach the Libyan coast, where they hope to begin another hazardous trip by boat to Europe. A statement released by the Interior Ministry says six foreigners were found dead near a road between Agadez and the Libyan border on May the 12th, while nine were found dead on June the 2nd and four more are missing on a road to Libya. Finally, North Korea says it's facing its worst drought in a century, sparking fears of worsening food shortages. Main rice-growing provinces had been badly affected and more than 30% of rice paddies were parching up. Hundreds of thousands of North Koreans are believed to have died during a widespread famine in the 1990s. That's the foreign news wrap-up. It's back to you, Suleiman. And the main news again, Nigerian governors have planned to meet with President Mohamed Buhari over the nation's economic downturn. The Extractive Industries Transparency Initiative have met with the Vice President, Professor Yemi Shibajo, over ways to curb billions of dollars in oil revenue leakage. Senate President Bukola Saraki has read the riot act to government agencies who failed to remit federal government revenue to the Federation account. And several mosques have been hit by a series of explosions in the Yemeni capital Sana'a, causing dozens of casualties. That's the news at 10 tonight. Many thanks for watching.